a previous video, we built this rather awe-inspiring battery grip for my Canon ES800D. It's got longer on time than this whole pile of camera batteries on its own, uh, but uh, due to time constraints and laziness, mostly laziness, uh, it has no charging electronics on board. Uh, indeed, the only interface for external power. It's got is a, a DC jack which leads straight to the protection circuit. So, I need to uh, use a specific charger for this thing. That's not the long-term solution, but for the time being, it'll have to do. Now, most would say just use a normal power bank charger, but there's the thing about Canon DSLR batteries. They are not 3.7 volts, they are 7.2 volts, two, two cells in series in all of these, and thus none of the standard single cell power bank stuff is going to work properly with them. I've done some research and the availability of stuff to charge two series uh, lithiums uh, in a compact package is very, very slim. So, we'll have to make do. And since this is the FF Cossack channel, we're of course going to make do with whatever we've got at hand. So, this is the charger for my tattered, dirty old worn out Canon ES 1000D. And it also uses a 2 series battery. Of course, in a different capsule than uh, the one that goes in the 800D, but that's no worries. We need to have a cord coming out of this thing anyway, since we're charging the mega battery. So what I've done here is to rig this up to charge these two giant cells by just taking apart an old AC adapter for the camera. Uh, this is the original PCB inside, and all I've done is change a short there to a 10K resistor in order to mimic the NTC, which is the thermal sensor in the battery, and this thing seems to charge away rather happily. So really all, all that's left to do is to make an adapter from there to the DC jack on the back of the uh, mega battery pack, and we should really be good to go. The only issue which might arise is if this thing's got a a fault time and it's not going to be too happy about charging a 6 amp hour battery as opposed to the 1 amp hour original battery that's supposed to go in it. But I will deal with that when the time comes. It'll probably be relatively easy to circumvent uh, in some way, shape or form anyway. Uh, this thing is powered by a microcontroller, it's not just a switch chip so it could have all kinds of magical thinking patterns going on but uh, we'll find that out in due course. And there we go, that's the pretty much completed product. So, uh, what I've done, I've just uh, soldered a lead onto one of these universal adapters you get in all these cheap charger kits, hot glued it in place, put some tape on it to give it some aesthetics, and then connected that to where there actually used to be another capacitor in the 1000D uh, battery pack. Uh, so, well, battery pack, battery elimination pack, uh, and uh, that's just running straight from there to the two positive and negative terminals on the uh, battery connector. And I, as you can see, I've cut a trace here to install the 10K fake thermistor resistor just to make the charger accept this as a battery. So I've quadruple checked the polarity. This should be ready for a test run. Alright, I'll have a camera run for a while to get rid of any excess charge in the battery uh, and I'll give this a quick test and something happened which made me very positive towards this charger being rather dumb when it comes to uh, the capacity of a battery because if we just turn the charger on with nothing connected except for this capacitor it'll go red and in a sec it'll go green and uh, if we measure the voltage across the cap, it's uh, charged to the 8.3 something volts that uh, it uh, is supposed to charge to. But in a while, there you go, it goes back red as the capacitor is discharging. So it doesn't care if you actually uh, disconnect or reconnect the battery. It just charges until it reaches its set voltage and then stops charging and keeps uh, restarts charging. Uh, once it's dropped down again. So that's not a sign of a very intelligent charger because if that happened with your normal camera battery, you know, you'd have to leave a battery in for weeks or months in order for that to happen. So I'm hopeful that they haven't implemented any kind of timer to stop charging after one amp hour. Here's to hoping. There it goes again. So 
that means we've got about 8 volts coming out of here and when we plug this in, hopefully LED should turn red Let's, let's, there you go, keep it green and it stays green and that's probably because the voltage in the battery pack is already high, uh, as high as this puts out let's uh, measure it just to be sure so the voltage across the connectors R R is 8.204 volts yeah I don't think that's low enough for this to actually trigger it seems to start charging it just about barely over 8 volts so I'll just have to uh, discharge the battery a bit more and it'll be good to go but uh, if we just uh, take this out we can see that uh, the adapter is doing its job if we can get it out because even with the uh, adapter out of the charger uh, we've still got the pack voltage across there so uh, this is all wired up correctly and working and once we get a low enough voltage in this humongous battery pack I'm pretty confident this charger is going to charge it but it's going to take a while to drain in the meantime I'll just put this together we know it's wired up correctly and it's going to work and there we go oh reassembled no if only there were a way to make this pack discharge a little bit faster hmm That ought to do it. Yeah, this, this was an absolutely unintentional happening, but when I saw the potential of allowing my old camera to run off of the new battery pack, of course I had to do it, especially since we also got the charger in at once. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to charge this guy up soon enough. So while we're waiting for that, we might as well take a look inside the Canon charger to see what the bolt quality is like. And uh, right off the bat, I do like the look of this thing. We've got a very, very clear primary, secondary side isolation there, because that slot goes into a slot on the plastic case as well. So that is excellent protection for the battery connector there. It's iso, iso coupler opto coupler isolated not iso coupler oscill oscillated uh, uh, and it's got a tiny transformer there very neatly packaged transformer I must say and on the back side again huge isolation going on nothing wrong with that in the slightest and uh, we've got uh, quite a large uh, component count going on uh, lots of little SMD stuff on the primary side, but uh, I guess yeah, there are barely any through hole passives, so that does make sense. Uh, that, that's going to make up a little switching driving circuit. And uh, where is our switching? Oh no, there we go. We've got a little switching IC. It's labeled, seems like something IP2F3. It's got a Matsushita logo on it, so it's a Panasonic part. Curious part of the primary also, we've got two entirely different primary side capacitors, but these are just word up in parallel. Well, perhaps with a choke in between. Yeah, with a choke in between. Uh, curious if they use two different packages for this. Nothing wrong with it, of course. Two amp 250 volt primary side views, that's uh, straight in line with the uh, power connect. Nothing wrong with that, as well as a protection resistor. Full bridge rectifier, not much going on. Secondary side is more interesting. We've got uh, this uh, little chip, which is an Atmel 0935 80 Tiny24. So it's a little uh, Atmel microprocessor, as you would expect in one of these things, as well as an LM LM358 op amp of that. That's a tiny guy. This guy's labelled JA3. I've seen that some time before. I'm not sure what it is. Probably a double MOSFET, uh, judging from the packaging and its proximity to the battery connector. 
is probably just in line with the battery as it's charging. And uh, this is going to be a tiny regulator. I cannot quite make out the numbers on that. It's curious that uh, it's conformally located around here. I'm not sure why they do that since none of the other stuff is. Perhaps they've got some very high impedance stuff right of the processor. That would be weird though. Uh, no real magic going on. Otherwise, just a couple of surface main transistors doing something. A couple of them could be driving the double color LED there. Uh, that's also a curious design. We've got the primary secondary side isolation a slot uh, very weirdly rated. We've got <laughs> we've got plenty of clearance here, but since it's sitting right by the transformer. It really looks as if you'd have a clearance problem, but we definitely do not. But that is a bit of an odd rating, really. But nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with this thing. Uh, we do have a uh, Lelon branded caps on the second river, and they are not tied down at all. So uh, I'm going to replace those at some stage because I do not trust Lelon. Date code. 0946 which makes sense and yeah you can read those numbers if you want to probably nothing too fat particular going on I'm not sure who'd manufacture this thing probably someone in Japan because I do believe uh, the, uh, most of the stuff that came with this camera was made in Japan what's it say on the back uh, is it made in Japan it's got Japanese writing on it ah oh, no made in China what a shame. Output is rated 8.4 volts, uh, 700 milliamps. I measured it at 620. Uh, so, yeah, that's fine. It's going to live up to its spec. Really, in my experience, Canon accessories seem to hold a very high standard. I also like how they've actually assembled this uh, case because it's got two screws there, uh, but it's also got uh, uh, little snaps around the edges, but no glue, making this thing very serviceable indeed. In fact, you could pretty much fix this like any normal power supply. Uh, as long as you don't blow the micro, you, you, you're going to be fine. So yeah, not a bad charger. I like this thing. I hope the programming in that microcontroller is going to allow it to live up to my expectations. All right, I've been beating around the bush with everything from Wi-Fi to 50p full HD recording on this thing. It's run warm and I'm thinking it's probably consumed enough battery to at least drop the voltage down to enough of battery charge to trigger. So here's to hoping. Stay red. Well, that's annoying. Oh, I think we got it. I just rebooted the charger and uh, it started charging. It seems to be really finicky about the charging uh, if it thinks the battery is full. I measured it, it was about 8.1 volts and that seems to be just about the threshold where this thing considers the battery not to be worth charging. But uh, now we've got a constant red light and it's charging at uh, 3 watts. So uh, the camera is on and it's going to be using less than that. So we are running the camera and charging the battery at the same time. Isn't that wonderful? That is something you traditionally can never do with a DSLR because you always have to take the battery out to charge it. Ah, that is fantastic. I wonder how many other DSLR owners there are out there who actually have this capability. I would wager not many unless you came to like some super high-end market where they offer that functionality. But as far as low to mid-end cameras go, oh, I, I, this, this must be one of the few setups in the world. So that's about it. That's how you take an old Canon charger and an old cheapo Canon adapter and turn it into a charger for a modern Canon as well as a power supply for your old one. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio. Alright, I've now left the battery drain 100% till the camera shut off and then I shot it in the charger and it's turned green. It's been here for about 10 hours or so, so that's a decent possibility. It has charged fully if it's going to, so let's 
see if a voltage is right, if this is about 1.3 volts or above, 8.3 volts or above, this is a perfect success. And that is 7.8 volts, so it has not charged the battery fully. That's a shame. Uh, 7.8 volts is a decent table of charge, though it's about 50%, so I'll just have to do it in a couple of sessions. I'm never going to run this battery completely flat anyway. Alright, and the LEDs turned green again, and I just tried reboot the charger, and it just goes instantly green once you reseat. Well, it did go instantly green once I reseated the battery, but uh, I think it's probably going to be full now. So let's give it a test and see. Yeah, 8.3. That's pretty much as fully charged as this is going to get. So, this uh, original Canon charger can charge 2.5, maybe 3 ish amp hours at a time without knocking itself over. And that's not bad. I'm probably not going to be using much more than 3 amp hours at a time anyway. And it is good to keep yourself kind of midway charged. So, not bad at all. A perfectly useful setup.